Hello friends, this is Krishna again from Good Luck Group and in this video blog we are going to see why people who do business in Dubai or UAE for that matter are not able to pay the uh, dues properly to the Indian exporters. There is a lot of cases where the people say that there are a lot of cheaters, frauds operating in Dubai and we are going to figure out why this particular problem is existing. So that's the whole idea of bringing this video here. And right now I'm here in Swarnabhumi uh, Airport. I'm at the business launch, as you can see. And since I have a long time to wait here for the, my next flight to Vietnam, I'm just taking this time to make this video. This might have some noise from the air conditioning ducts here at the background, so please don't mind that. So let's go on to some other matter. So in Dubai, most of the fruits and vegetables come by two systems. One is sale commission system, or the other one is done rate or fixed rate. So most of you know the difference between these two systems, I guess so. For those who don't know about this, I'm going to make a separate video on this and I'm going to put it out, out there on the YouTube as well. So from that you can know how commission system works because there has been a lot of confusion because people think the commission system is you just fill it at the price and take the fixed uh, commission as your uh, fee or something like that. That's not the case. So we're going to make an entirely different video on that particular subject matter. So uh, wait until that time. So now what we're trying to focus is why people run away with other people's money, especially the exporter's money in Dubai, right? So let's look into the topics. First point, the reason is it is too, too, too expensive to run any establishment in Dubai. Especially for a fruits and vegetable business, you need to have a foodstuff license, which is basic, or most of the time people go for a general trading license. The importer in Dubai who wants to operate in Dubai can either up for a general trading company or for a foodstuff company. It's preferably going to be in a mainland company, not in a free zone company because after the, uh, what do you say, the uh, implementation of that, it's difficult to do business from a uh, free zone company because everything needs to be built and then it needs to be uploaded for. So we can't just play around with what people used to do in the past with running a free zone company and selling it inside UAE. That's not possible now. So we're going to talk about running a mainland company so if you're going to run a mainland Dubai Economic Department authorized company, is either going to be a foodstuff company or a general trading company. That's it. Foodstuff company is relatively cheaper for the license part. But however, general trading is what most of them prefer because you know, they also do other things as well in being in Dubai. So the first thing is the license. The license is going to cost about 40,000 dirhams per year. Okay, The first year is going to be steep. It might be a little bit more than 40,000 dirhams because you need to pay for the uh, rental of the office, you need to pay for the uh, uh, license fee as such, you need to pay for the sponsor, and I think again you need to pay a little bit fee for the uh, PRO. So the license takes the major component, okay? Then comes the person's accommodation, the residential accommodation. Even if it's going to be a bed space, something like that to get started with, it's got to pay something around uh, 700 dirhams per month, and it's going to be multiplied by 12 months, and you can get it like 8,400, that's the least, okay? But if it's going to be a guy who's going to take up an apartment on his own or maybe a service apartment or studio, it's, he's going to be paying a little bit more than that. It's going to be in the range of 36,000 dirhams to 48,000 dirhams, depending on location, size, and various other factors. So we already have some 60,000 dirhams there for the license fee for the first year. And then we have about 40,000 dirhams for the residential apartment. And then let's say that he's going to have some employee. He has to have an employee because you know, he can't just do everything on his own. So one employee is going to be costing about 3,000 dirhams per month. So that multiplies by 12 is going to be 36,000 dirhams. So then um, you have the other charges like your Deva. Deva is supposed to be the Dubai Electricity and Water Authority for which you need to pay three things actually. It's not just two things. You need to pay for the water, you need to pay for the electricity and also you need to pay for the quit rent in certain cases. And then there are other, what to say, operational expenses like running around your petrol, your cars, this, that and all that. So all put together, the first year alone is going to come around 100 plus thousand dirhams. Okay, 100,000 dirhams or more easily for the first year, right? So to get this 100,000 dirhams, let's say that the importer is doing something like onion, right? To get started with onion because that's the most famous thing nowadays in Dubai. Everybody from India wants to export onion. And everybody who wants to do business in Dubai wants to get started by importing onion. And so the, uh, let's talk about onion as such. So one container of onion is going to cost about 5 lakhs rupees. Okay. 
So one container of onion, let's say the average is one dirham. Okay, the prices go sometimes up to 60 fills, or sometimes it goes up to 1.4 dirhams, one dirham and 40 fills. Okay, so let's say we just put it in an average for a year, and it's going to be one dirham per kilo. So in one container, we have 29,000 kilos. So that means one container, the selling price is about 29,000 dirhams. So on a 29,000 dirhams, if this guy is going to claim a 5% commission, it's going to work out something around 1,250 dirhams, actually. Let's say that uh, it's going to be 100,000 divided by 12, it's going to be 8,333 dirhams per month. So let's say that if he's going to sell this container of onion about you know, on average 1 dirhams, so it's going to be 29,000 dirhams into 5% of this commission, so that comes to 1,450 dirhams. So if you're going to divide this 8,333, by 1450 dirhams, he needs to sell about 5.74 container per month alone to cover his overheads, to cover his fixed cost. Whether he does business or not, he has to pay the sum of 8,333 dirhams, not including his food, not including his own profit, or rather his uh, remuneration for the work that he is doing, nothing, right? So we're just talking about the other expenses here. So he has to sell about 5.74 or let's say 6 containers of onion to cover the cost alone. Only after selling the 6 containers and getting an uh, accumulated commission of 8,300 to 9,000 dirhams, he's going to make the balance profit for himself and for his family. You know, you have to remember that these importers have come a long way leaving the family and obviously they need to get some money more than what they could potentially could have done business and got in back in India or any other country for that matter. Maybe it's a Pakistani importer or an Indian importer, we don't know. So the reason behind them coming here is to make more than what would have they potentially could have made back home in their own country. Right? So the first six containers is gone. It doesn't belong to him. The profit from the first six containers, it doesn't belong to him at all. But is it easy to do anything more than six containers? No. It's very difficult. Frankly speaking, it's very, very, very difficult. Because why? The competition is too high. So that's the second point. The competition is too high. The first point is the high overheads. Now I'm coming to the second point. The second point is the competition. Competition is too high because everybody, every Tom, Dick and Harry wants to do the onion business here. And most of the time, even the exporter himself wants to come up and set up an establishment over here in Dubai. For various reasons, okay? That we'll talk about later. So the point is these kind of importers who want to kind of set up a business here and do it on commission system or on uh, whatever it may be, they need to push, push, push so much so that they need to get six containers first in order to cover their overheads alone, all right? And then way beyond that six containers, whatever they can get it is their pure profit. Now again, we're talking about the competition. The competition is so high, why? Because there are too many people in the market. Second thing is, uh, Dubai is not having a good relationship at present with Qatar and Oman, so the reloading part has come down a lot. I mean, there is absolutely no reloading for Qatar. It's totally broken. It's totally cut off. And uh, they to Oman, but uh, again, it's not much. And uh, Oman has developed its own port, so uh, there is directly metal going to Oman as well. So there's no necessity for it to come to Dubai, which used to be the hub for these GCC areas earlier. You understand? So, competition is number two. Third thing, bad debts. These people, whoever have been in the business in the past, have incurred bad debts because they couldn't recover from people uh, with whom they dealt in the past. It can be either in Qatar or it can be locally in GCC itself because there are so many people running away, so many people running away, so many people shutting down the shops. Even the big names like, you know, Al Manama supermarket recently closed. There was a big name like uh, Royal Fruits which had a branch inside the Alavir market itself closed. They were running for 30 plus years. Nobody in the wildest dream knew that these such big giants would close up one day, you know. And the fourth important thing, the legal system. So basically, if you want to get yourself covered, the government must protect you in a certain way. But unfortunately, now what has happened is both Indian government and Dubai government are not protecting the investors money. I'll tell you how. Basically, if you're going to do export from India, there's a body called ECGC, which stands for Export Credit Guarantee Corporation. 
This company, ECGC, is basically an insurance company for exporters. Just in case if the exporters don't get the money from their uh, importers in another country, so this ECGC is supposed to take care of that particular problem and check if everything is correct from the exporters part. And if it's okay, then it's uh, supposed to basically fund them back up to 80 or 85 percent according to the case, according to the product and according to their agreement actually. But unfortunately, the sad story is most exporters you know, don't know about this, would be exporters never heard of this and then even those who know about this never go and actually approach the ECGC. Why? Because they have the particular myth saying that the government doesn't help us and then it's going to be difficult to get some work out of the government and second thing is even if they really do take the pain of going to the ECGC, the ECGC people shoo them away. They just said, this is this we need this paperwork, that paperwork, and all this stuff, and make it a little bit more complicated. And in some cases, the experts are not so illiterate, you know. So then they get scared away with all this jargon and technical stuff. And uh, so uh, they just you know, say, okay, fine, it's not going to work. We'll just take the path of blind trust, and you know, let's see how the importer and the buyer is going to do. You know, that's leading to a disastrous situation. And even if, unfortunately, the point is, even if ECGC does cover, you don't get 100% coverage, you just get 80% coverage or something like that in that range, depending on the product, depending on your agreement with the ECGC. And uh, of course, you need to follow a set of uh, principles and policies by ECGC to get the particular claim, if at all there's a claim. Otherwise, you know, they'll just reject it. As in many cases, the insurance company is more keen on taking your uh, premium than in, you know, kind of producing results or, you know, supporting you when there's a disaster, right? So this is the first thing. The first thing is from the government of India. So you need to approach ECGC, right? And even if you do approach, maximum is gonna be some 80% or something of the value. Now the second thing, the system in Dubai. Earlier, as far as I know, or as far as I've heard, uh, it seems there was a very serious offense to bounce a check, you know? It was very, very serious. Even banks themselves uh, had the freedom and the right to take action if somebody wants to check. But now, that's not the reality at all. That's not the reality at all. Now it's become very, very, very difficult to reclaim your money if there is a check bounce. Why? Because there are so many cases, so many cases the government themselves don't encourage these check bounce cases because these are considered petty cases most of the time and then they need to spend a lot of time and effort for that. So in fact, they really don't encourage too much of uh, this uh, pity case or rather too much of this uh, check bounce cases so this is the problem so this is the problem so what happens is the importers they know very well that the exporters are not covered by ECGC and then the ECGC company cannot come and touch them in Dubai and they also know that it's not easy for usually the exporters don't take a uh, PDC check from importers you know so even if they do take a check it's almost good as nothing so the importers are trying to play around with this kind of a loophole in the legal system. <clears throat> so to summarize, we have four points. Number one, cost of operation. Number two, competition. Number three, bad debts incurred by the importer due to other parties inside Dubai. Number four, we're talking about the legal framework. The legal framework is not so tight, it's a little bit loose and so that gives an opportunity for people to play around. Okay. And as an extension of the legal system, there is another important thing and one more important point we need to add under the legal framework you need to understand that most of the importers are not basically citizens of uae most of them are not so they are basically immigrants and then they don't have any roots they don't have a citizenship they don't have a permanent entity they can be for three years they can be for 30 years but they don't they're not part of the nationality at all you know so Anytime they can just run away with the money and then go back to that particular country and then it's difficult for Dubai government to go and put their hands on the uh, respective other country to claim the money back, especially if it's going to be a case between an exporter and an importer. If it's their own money, like if, say for example, I heard something in the social media saying that UA government has sent a team to recover some money for uh, people who have done some fraudulent practices and taken loans not paid from banks in UAE. Point, yes, that could be possible because you know it's government's money, so or maybe it's an institutional game. But what about an individual in, independent uh, exporter who has sent one container, two container? How is he going to get this claim done again? I don't think any government is going to support him basically because the point is once the uh, importer runs away to his respective home country, let's say it's going to be Pakistan or Bangladesh or even for that matter India, 
Dubai government cannot reach out to India or Pakistan or Bangladesh and you know, go behind them and saying that you uh, ran away with somebody's money so when while doing business in the UAE so you need to repay them back it's not going to happen that way no no and second thing is there's no point in you going and complaining to your own government because they will say that jurisdiction is different the only point is you could have taken an ECGC and if you didn't take that even that particular uh, ray of hope is gone so there's nothing that you can do about it you know so this is another problem with legal framework also nobody stays there forever and they can just take the bags and fly off anytime they want and uh, maybe maybe they can come back again but that's not our problem you know we are the exporters losing the money this time and whether he comes back or not the importer comes back or not it's not our problem at all it's not nothing to do with us so the exporters lost the money that's it gone is gone so these are the issues that give room to a lot of you know speculative people to work in uae in a very bad uh, situation and then bring bad name to the market as such because you know there are there are definitely yes there are some genuine buyers genuine importers who are doing business for a long 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 time but then their image is also getting tarnished because of these kind of people in the market these kind of small timers these kind of one night stand people these kind of people who have their intention only of, of cheating uh, the exporter and running away with the bulk of the amount because they cannot sustain and run a profitable business if they just going to do for the 5% i can give it in writing we if you want to do it honestly for 5% or whatever it may be for a commission system you need to have volume it's a volume game as i said you no know, if you are going if you just going to be a next wise or an abc with a no brand no image nothing you're not going to get some 20 containers per month it's not going to happen absolutely no way you know the big names who have survived all this and you know we have come across all these pain points and then go now establish the business well and they know whom to deal with and whom not to deal with and reduce the risk factor they can do a lot of volumes they can get a lot of containers but all these small small people chota bachas they cannot get it you know and then these are the people who are most of the time trying to victimize the exporter back in india or any other country for that matter so we need to be careful with all these small timers so one thing is actually you know you need to do some groundwork back in india itself if you are an indian exporter you can do your groundwork back in india itself and see that particular buyer is an indian again and if he is an indian luckily then in that case you should go and check his background uh, back in india itself of course he must be having some family some other business in india so you need to check how you can protect yourself if this something goes wrong in dubai you know you need to create the framework you need to create the legal framework as to catch him back here in india if something goes wrong over there whether it's intentional or unintentional that we don't care you know we need to catch all of that guy here likewise you know if it's going to be a pakistani exporter he needs to do something with this pakistani buyers there i mean there's nothing much that a pakistani exporter can do with an indian importer because if an indian importer gets back to india there's nothing much that a pakistani guy pakistani exporter can do with him likewise the same story if an indian exporter deals with a pakistani buyer there and if at all something goes wrong god forbid if something goes wrong then it's going to be difficult for him to go to pakistan and catch him there are a lot of issues related to visas and other stuff like that you know this long story and him see the point is even if we give something to our uh, neighbor or something is difficult for us to get the money back where the hell are we going to go to another country to collect recover the money especially on an individual level so it's going to be difficult very 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 difficult so these are the reasons why many people take the chance and do something like this and spoil the name of the market and also give big big problems financially to the indian exporters or any exporter for that matter so now that we spoke about all the problems is there a solution for this all these problems definitely yes for a pessimist for every solution he can find a problem for an optimist for every problem there are multiple solutions so we at good luck are happy to pre- present you a solution there are a lot of ways to do uh, business in a very successful manner and we are here to support you and uh, if you want to get in touch with us i'm available at plus 9198847262252 don't forget to click the uh, subscribe button and click on the uh, bell button for instant notifications when you release the next video on export import so uh, please stay with us and uh, let's grow together so until then this is krishna wishing you all good luck